How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another live session at three. I actually have Garrett in the studio with me today. Say, hey, Garrett. Hello. So maybe if I am unable to answer some of your questions, he can chime in and maybe give us some advice. All right. Um, first, new business. I told y'all I was going to find one of these things. We have in our possession another Honda TRX 400EX. Now I can go ahead and tell you, I can't find a single thing on this particular unit that I like. It is a hunk of junk, but that is exactly what I was after because we're going to take a deep dive into it. So as many of you are 400EX fans, if you're going to need a procedure uh, to show how to do it on this particular unit, lay, I'll lay you odds that we're going to end up diving into it. And just to give you one example, the uh, the extra guards it has for the, the footwell, guess what they're held on by? Zip ties. So <laughs> that just gives you an overall indicator just how bad a shape this unit is really in. So I think it's going to be a fun one. Now conversely, you can see on our bench back here, actually just on the floor back here, Garrett and I have been working on a 2021 Can-Am Renegade. Uh, I've just had this thing around the block and before we brought it in here. It is viciously fast, but we're going to be doing a series showing how to install different accessories that you yourself can do at home. It's really not that tough and you can save some money in the process. So be looking for those to come out in the near future. All right, we're going to swing around and answer some question that I may have missed last time. So let me bring up that Word document. Recon had asked me, he says, I have a 2020 Kawasaki KLX 230 and I can't find a fender eliminator kit for it. Can you help? All right, well, I had our guys do a little bit of research just before we jumped on and evidently Yoshimura makes one for a, uh, a 2019 and I, to my knowledge, they didn't make any changes in between 19 and 20, so that should work on it. And if my friend up in Tennessee could take that part number and drop it into the chat, It'll be here for uh, when Recon is ready to maybe watch this video or look at the chat and then uh, we can go after that part number. But at any rate, yes, Yoshimira makes one. Yes, we do carry it. So if you would check, check the chat, say that three times real fast, and uh, we can get one sent out to you. Another one that I couldn't get to last week Wyatt had asked me, how do I fix the throttle on my 2019 Can-Am Renegade 1000 XMR? It has only given me half throttle. Well, I went through some of the notes on that particular unit from Can-Am, and uh, there was no indicators like a, a sensor getting tripped, because I know on some of the old Kawasaki's, if the belt really started getting worn, it would get loose and actually trick, uh, trip a switch on the inside of the belt cover, and that would cut it you know, basically to a third throttle. There's nothing I could find on the Can-Am that would uh, indicate that. I, I then just jumped around and looked at a couple of different uh, forums and see if this question had been asked, and it had. And most of the, most of the time they were directing people back to look at the, your, your fuel supply. Um, potentially your fuel pump filter has um, probably stopped up and it's not let it, letting it uh, get enough fuel to where it will, it will rev out. So that's probably where I would start. And if you've got the capability of actually doing a measurement on the fuel PSI. It may look fine at idle, but when you're really getting into it, it's having a delivery problem that you're only gonna see when you're, you're in the throttle. So keep that in mind if you're gonna start looking at it from, uh, from that angle. All right, looks like uh, I've got a couple of questions rolling in, so let me switch over to the live stuff now. Brandon is asking me, clean my carburetor on my 2000 Rancher ES 4x4, and it's still not exactly, it's not idling exactly right. Any ideas what could have caused it? Right, a couple of things. When you go through and do a, a cleaning, did you actually replace any of the jets and or the, uh, the float level? Because your float level could, of course, affect your, uh, your, your idling. And then you also want to make sure that you were very accurate when you went to clean out the idle jet as those are very small orifices and they're typically tough to clean out. And if, if you didn't replace it with something like a moose kit, um, I would suggest you maybe pull it back out and use some brake, or not brake cleaner, but carburetor cleaner and see if you could actually spray through the jet 
and then maybe hold it, up, hold it up to a light, you should be able to see just a little pinhole to make sure it's cleaned out. Now, the only other thing I could probably suggest would be is on that one, there is actually an idle control or idle screw on it that you may need to make sure you got it back in the original location. That's basically just a stop for your throttle and that sets your idle adjustment. Last but not least, there is an idle air adjustment screw. And if memory serves, when you go to seat that one, there was a spring and then a very small O-ring on the end of it. Hopefully you didn't lose that O-ring. And when you go to reset it, I believe the factory setting was two and a quarter turns out. And what that means is you lightly seat it and then bring it back two and a half turns or two and a quarter turns. Well, check those few things and see what you found out. And uh, if that still doesn't get it, then send me another message and let us know whether or not you fit, uh, fixed it or not. I still would like to know. All right. A couple people were just saying hello. Hello back to Taiwan. Your English is not so good. Well, mine probably isn't the best, as good as it should be. How are you doing? Hello, Boomer. How are you doing? 420. <laughs> Interesting what name you got there. Hello. I feel like you're having a good day. All right, JK Gaming is asking me, hey, I have a 2007 Yamaha Raptor 700. I know that engine well. And it just started to smoke really bad. Uh oh, what should I do? I have to rebuild the top end or can I just put rings in it? All right, uh, hopefully it is just your rings, but what, is gonna, what you're gonna have to do is actually measure or take a look on the inside of the cylinder, make sure those walls aren't scored because if your piston's worn and your cylinder's worn, just throwing in a set of uh, rings, is it going to solve it for a short period of time? Yes, but you're going to have so much slop in there that it, it's just going to continue to wear and those rings are going to, they're probably not going to seat, first of all, and then they're going to be gone fairly quickly. Now, I believe that the, uh, the 700, that is a Nicosil cylinder, so if you did want to increase the bore size, you will have to get it, get it plated. I know there's several um, kits out there where you can take it out to a, uh, um, a 740 or somewhere in that neighborhood. But if you do that, keep in mind that that puts additional stress on the lower unit, the, the internals of it. And the 700s, their Achilles heel is actually, if you get too much torque involved, if you haven't, what's the best way to determine or to talk about this, resupported the crankcase casing itself it's been known to crack when you start really throwing some high RPMs and or more torque into it. So uh, you may want to look into getting those plates that will actually help hold it together. There's a couple of different specialty shops out there that uh, are really good at it. Um, I'm not sure that we carry them, but hey, we're all about having this, uh, enjoying the sport. So if, if you want to do a search on Cuervo Racing, those guys, uh, they know more than just about anybody out there on the Yamaha Raptor 700 in particular. So, uh, and I think if they don't manufacture a kit, they know or they, uh, they, they promote one that works really well. So just be careful if you decide to go larger on the, on the displacement or make any other heavy modifications. Hello, Taiwan. And oof, you're up at 3.03 in the morning. Ouch. <laughs> Ah, uh, the Can-Am factory burned down. I had not heard, heard that, did it? Well, wasn't my fault. <laughs> they managed to get this one out before it happened then, I guess. Boomer is asking me, I have a 2015 player Sportsman 1000 XP, and I've been having a hard time, uh, changing, gear, hard time changing gear. Any suggestions? Okay, uh, where's your idle set? That will be the first place I would look because if it's not set in the right RPM range, she's not going to want to change gears very easily. It needs to be below a certain threshold, and I think that's what, 650 or 750 RPMs? They, they idle a little high naturally, but if it's beyond that, that means your, your, your sheaves are um, engaging and it's not wanting to relax the transmission to where you can actually shift. There's one other possibility. If your RPMs are not too high, the sheaves may be binding up, maybe needs to be cleaned up in there, and that could be causing it. Because if those sheaves don't go to a, a relaxed position, they're going to continuously spin that belt with a lot of authority. I mean, 
just sitting there at idle is, is going to be moving, but it's really not turning the, uh, the uh, driven sheave, and that's what allows you to be able to change gears on it. So first, make sure your idle is okay. Second, pop that outer cover, take a peek, and make sure she doesn't need to be cleaned out a little bit. Oh, look at this. I just got a message from one of our guys. <whistles> Massive explosion at, and fire at the Can-Am factory in Mexico. I was not aware of that. Um, I, mm. In this picture I'm looking at, guys, it doesn't look good, so I hope everybody's okay there. That's going to slow down some manufacturing. Mm. All right, let's go to mine. Is there a regreasable swing arm bolt for a 2004 EX? As far as adding grease to it without taking it apart, well, either way, you'd have to take it apart. But I had, in my youth, a 1987 CR250, one of the old, old bad boys, two strokes. And when I broke it down to uh, re-grease everything, I actually added in zert fittings into the pivot points on the, uh, the swing arm and various other points, if memory serves. So as far as having anything re-greasable, you're going to do it yourself. But a bolt that's got a re-greasing zert fitting on it, not that I'm aware of, not that I'm aware of. So you, you would have to grease it from the outside, I would think, either by A, taking it apart, or B, still taking it apart, but adding, adding in a zert fitting. But if you do so, be careful, because uh, you can make a mess out of some expensive aluminum very quickly. <coughs> Caesar is asking me, what's up, John? <sighs> me, barely. Yesterday was a long, long day. We, I don't want to go into it, but I tired. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably hear me say that too often. But when you hit my age, you, you uh, reserve the right to whine a little bit. So, boo-hoo. Thank you for all your information. Sincerely. Oh, well, you're quite welcome. Glenn is asking, any chance you're going to do that coolant flush video on the Honda, Honda Rancher 420? Yes, we are. And that's when I get the unit back. Um, that unit we actually purchased, and uh, I had promised this person, uh, local, that I would sell them to it when I was finished. Well, I haven't finished with it yet, but I sold it to them anyway, so I'll have to extract it back from the new owner, and we're actually going to do a top-end build on that one. And I believe we're also scheduled to dive into the, uh, the clutch system. I want to address that as well. But part of that will be uh, actually flushing out that cooling system, because why not if you're going to do a top-end? Well, let's go ahead and get some really clean fluid you know, going through uh, what is essentially going to be an older older radiator so it performs as, as best it can. But yes, are we going to do it? Yes. But there's like four other projects uh, standing in front of it right now. But we're getting through them just as quick as we can. All right. Ramsey was getting, giving some advice. They have jet cleaning tools for manual cleaning. He is correct. And, he's, and Brandon says he's cleaned the jets. Well, then if you've eliminated that, eliminated that possibility, then go back and make sure that you've got both the, um, the idle air screw adjusted correctly and then the actual um, stop point for the, uh, the throttle plates. Oh, now we're getting a little bit more. It sat for seven years. Yep. Whew. Yep, I was going to say, well, let's take a look at the tank, because uh, at the tank um, where the petcock valve actually goes up into it, there is a filter, if I remember correctly. It's a plastic with a really small, fine mesh, and uh, that may be causing you your issue. So six years, that is a long time. Things turn to uh, syrup and or break down in that length of time. So go a little bit further up the food chain to make sure we don't have a problem inside the tank. Dennis is asking me, hey, John, I have a 2002 Sportsman 400. That was one of the, was that a two or a four stroke? I think it was a two stroke. That lost brakes going downhill two days ago. Oh, boy. Brakes, brake lever went to the grip and got nothing. Isn't that fun? Pumped the brake pedal, and then they came back and then went again, now back. Well, I'd start off simple and just try to do, it's obviously got air in the system and or you've got a uh, master cylinder failing. So I would probably start with just doing some uh, fresh fluid, flush it through, and I've done a bunch of different videos showing how to do a brake bleed. I think we did one on the 850. Um, 
Tracy, if you want to drop that one, if we indeed do one on that particular unit, drop that in the feed so uh, Dennis can take a look at that particular video. If not, Dennis, just go to our YouTube channel and look up at the, uh, the playlist for a Sportsman 850. And if that still didn't get it, um, then you're probably going to have to go in and take a peek. And I would probably look at the master first because if your slave is, is got a problem, it's usually going to spit out fluid. Uh, more than likely, but if you're losing pressure after a couple of pumps, it may be that the seals are going in the, uh, the master and it's going to need to be rebuilt and or replaced uh, depending on what kind of shape the, um, the, cylinders, the cylinder is on the, uh, the master. Vegas, um, I traced everything down and the only thing I, I can think of is the starter. Did I miss an earlier question from Vegas? Oh, yes, I did. Vegas says, I have a 2003 Raptor 660R, timed and correct and such. That tells me you probably went through the top end then. When I hit the start button, it turns over about one rotation a second without the spark plug in. It spins freely. Whew. Possibly the starter clutch. Are we sure that we've got all those the starter reduction gears put in there correctly? Because I believe there's either one or two critically um, spaced or, or there's critical locations for a couple of different washers. And if those are in the wrong place, it's going to bind up. So I would go back to the exploded diagrams on Partzilla and take a look and make sure that you're not missing something in there because it sounds like it's, something's a little off, just in my opinion. So take a peek. Look at the drawings, make sure you didn't miss anything. Really? Uh, hey, hey, coming from Garrett over there, so uh, why don't you go take a peek? Just sounds like there's an installation error, sorry, or maybe something got missed as far as, you know, make sure there isn't an extra washer sitting on your teardown bench unless you worked with a bunch of crazy mechanics like I have when we did that to each other on purpose. We'd either take away or add in extra nuts or bolts on their bench. Sorry, Steve, it was just too much fun. <laughs> oh, let's see, Luke. Hi, John, big fan of your videos. Well, thank you. I've started, I have a starting issue with my 06 GSX-R600, press the starter and nothing happens. I notice there is no load applied to the battery. Well, there's a typical no-start condition, and you start with the simplest stuff first. Make sure that your, your starter solenoid is working. We've got a couple of different videos that show you how to just automatically jump it to see if it's your starter or not, or the starter solenoid. And then you just work out from that direction, making sure that you're actually getting a trigger source from your start button. Then it may be an interrupt somewhere on the starting system. It could be a uh, clutch switch. New, uh, gear in, in, a gear neutral gear indicating switch and or your kickstand on some units sometimes I'm not sure if Suzuki's one of them they don't want to even start unless you've got the kickstand up I think that's kind of odd myself because you know let them start up and you know idle for a while on the kickstand but hey I've seen it happen before but just your basics and I think we did a no start scenario on our Jixer 1000 so if you would look at that playlist and I can walk you through it Beer Cave. Hey, John, I just rewatched your KLX 110 carb video. Whew, we did that one a long time ago. Do you think you can make a clutch uh, replacement video for a KLX 110L? I'm sure that we can. We can put it on the list, but as I, as I said earlier, we got a lot, a lot of stuff to work on. So, Tracy, you need to load up and get back down here and let's get busy. I'm already going to you know, wear out Garrett, so you, know, you need to get down here and join, and join in on the fun. Our playlist is getting longer and longer. <clears throat> All right, here's a good one. Keith, just got a basket case 03 Honda CRF 450R. All right, why does the exhaust header uh, get red hot? Uh, that's kind of indicative of that machine. We've got a, an 05 450, and uh, it, it ran when we brought it in. And um, that head pipe would just get red, especially at night. It was unbelievable. And I believe those things are made uh, out of titanium, so they transfer heat really well, and that's hence why it's glowing like that. 
Is it anything to be, aware, uh, be afraid of? I don't think so. But if you're concerned about your machine running a little too hot, why don't you do a plug check to make sure that uh, your, your the electrode, not the electrode, the ceramic isn't a bright white on the end of your, uh, your spark plug. And that would be an indication that it is running too lean because I don't think you want a whole lot of piston from things getting too hot in there. All right, Dennis, again, still working now. Okay, this is the brake question. Still working now, but get a clack, clack, clack sound in the rear when the brakes are applied. Hmm. Oh, and the foot brakes didn't work at the time they were out either, suggestions. As far as the clacking sound when um, you're hitting the brakes, that would seem to indicate either A, your, your brake caliper is not tightened as it should be, or the pins could be worn out on the, uh, on the, the slides, if you will, of the brake caliper. But beyond that, are you sure all your suspension points are in good shape? Have we worn out a bushing or something like that? I mean, this is definitely a mechanical sound brought on by the brakes being applied. So hit your, hit your uh, start at your caliper and work your way out. Luke said, maybe on the side stand switch or the clutch switch. Yes, you may want to take a look at both of those. <laughs> T is asking me, can me buy you something? Give me DHL all. <laughs> oh, he's saying I'm shopping. Um, I'm shopping with you. Is there a way to send it to me? Um, if you would send in a, uh, if you're trying to place an order, uh, get in touch with the uh, the support team and um, see if they can help you get whatever you're looking at ordered. And uh, See if we can get that done. If you can't get in touch with customer service, drop a link in the, or uh, drop a message in the instant messenger and we'll get it sent over to the uh, CSR reps. Wonder Ed, doing a Honda Rancher 350 top end rebuild using your videos for a guide. Well, I can't find, I can't, I can't find values for it on Partzilla. And I know we did that one. so. Tracy, if you would drop in the uh, the top end build that we did on the on the rancher, yeah, we did a we did a top end on that one. Yeah, if you would drop it in there for Wonder Red. Yeah, Williams also um, responding to Brandon. Did you use forced air to blow out the carb out? Very important. Uh, depending on how you cleaned it, uh, either to blow it out with carb cleaner and or compressed air. Some of those orifices are tough to deal with. If you don't get it blown out, it's not going to run right. Moto things, I uh, want a Yamaha R6 engine. Well, they're out there. If not build your own. Find one that's been broken and then uh, rebuild it. And I know we have a video showing you how to do that. Even take it out to a 636 with a, um, that was a Weiss code kit if I remember correctly. All right. Doug's asking me, hey, John, I have a 2005 Sportsman 500 HO. I'm rebuilding the engine and found the piston ring lands had cracked. What could have caused that? You're saying that the actual piston rings, they, they, actually, they were actually broken. That's possible. Is that what you're telling me? For something like that, did, you in, did it ingest water? Because it sounds like either it, it went through a, a drastic... Uh, did we lose the feed, guys? Lost the feed on Facebook. Well, we'll keep going just in case it, it is only Facebook and it's just uh, their connection that's making a mess. <clears throat> that's a, when a, a, a ring, a piston ring actually cracks, that's indicative of a just wild temperature change, like it ingested water even for a split second, and that, that shock to it made it pop. But it sounds like you're, uh, you know, you're on your way to you know, reworking things, and um, that is an odd one, but uh, that's the only thing I can come up with. All right. Oh, Moto thinks he wants an R6 because uh, he's building a shifter cart. Yeah, that, <laughs> you got Garrett's attention now. Uh, that that uh, 
that R6 engine that we built ended up in a Formula SAE car. Um, interesting project uh, in the collegiate area where they all build miniature F1 cars and then compete at a national and international level. So pretty cool stuff. But uh, that in a shifter cart, that should be vicious. So if you, uh, if you do pull that off, you know, get in touch with us. I'd like to see it. I need sleep. Good night. We're going to do this about for another five minutes, and I'm going to be hitting the trail. Logan's F-150. Hey, how's it going, Logan's? I think you were here last week. Hey, John, I'm replacing some parts on my Camp X700, and I can't find anything on how to do the rear brakes. Any idea how to do that? That is one particular unit I haven't worked on yet, but I can't imagine that it's going to be that tough. There should be, there's going to be hydraulic, and there should be just a couple of pins that you have to remove to uh, take out the pads and then cram in a couple of new ones. Probably the one closest that we've done to that would probably be our, um, I know it's Yamaha and we're talking about a Kawasaki, but I bet you it's set up close to what a, uh, a 450R would be in the Yamaha line. So take a look. My name, who knows? You are cool, cool sir. Never thought of myself being cool. I'm like 10 degrees off cool, but you know, thank you. <laughs> I'm just a monkey with a wrench. William has given some more advice to Brandon. Check your airflow and make sure your air filter is oiled. Good advice. Tack has asked me, my 2020 Raptor 700 is due for its first service. What do they do at the shop? Valve adjustment, oil change, etc. The first one is probably just going to be your oil change. I mean, that's all they're going to be looking after. Uh, they'll do an oil change. They'll check all your other settings on it, make sure it's idling right, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then they're also going to clean your your air filter itself, get it uh, back up, to, cleaned out, and back up to snuff and reoiled. But nothing that intense. And you know, they should at least get your chain slack set because I guarantee you, uh, it's starting to stretch out initially. It'll stretch out a lot initially and uh, they'll need to get that back in line so it doesn't derail and potentially crack your cases. But nothing that intense, but um, the first one, yeah, go ahead and let them do it. But after that, you may want to just start doing it yourself. I mean, take ownership of it, that way you know it's uh, gonna be ready to go each and every time you head out on the trail. I mean, uh, the dealers, uh, they operate at a high level and the uh, manufacturers hold them to a high standard and um, the, the, you're typically going to get good service at an OEM dealership level um, mechanic. But, hey, why not do it yourself and save a little money? But for the first one, yeah, let them look at it, make sure. Everything is running the way it should. All right. <clears throat> Whew. Paul's jumping in real quick. Hey, Paul. Uh, I'll be watching on my iPad today. I got a big zero turn I've got to finish up. But last week I tried to show that, tow that Honda up my hill with the tractor, back, tractor backwards. Well, don't fix it yet because I want to. It's just a matter of us coordinating for um, you to bring it down here and uh, let us take a peek at it. I got to get all these other machines out of the way. Well, guys, there's still a bunch of questions, but guess what? I'm pretty much out of me. <laughs> So listen, uh, we're going we're gonna to call it a day, and I know there's like eight or nine questions that I haven't gotten to yet, but I will have the guys print those off, I will look at those, and then we'll start off next week we'll, with the answers to those particular questions. Well, listen, we just want to say thanks for uh, swinging by and spending a little time with us, and uh, especially if you're shopping with us, because that makes all of this possible. and keeps me and Garrett employed in a business that we uh, really enjoy doing. Once again, thank you. Uh, everybody have a great weekend, a great week, and we will see you next Friday at 3. God bless.